If you're a born again Christian man, modern women are going to hate you. And the reason for this is because most modern women have been absolutely brainwashed by feminism. They think, man, I don't need no man. I can get this myself. I'm independent. I'm strong. I can figure out all this stuff. I'm not answering to no man. I'm not submitting to nobody. What, why would I need a man? I can make all the money myself. Like, what do I need him for? And what they don't realize is that feminism is a ploy by the elites that run everything in our world to destroy the nuclear family because they know that if a woman becomes independent and she no longer needs a man there's no reason to get into a relationship there's no reason to get married or to start a family why would you want to do that like he's just gonna oppress you and make your life a living hell like why would you bring a guy into your life and the whole feminist movement is a deception that was instigated by satan no one hates families more than the devil because families are a unity between a man and a woman and God. A covenant relationship between the three that is sealed by God. God loves marriage. Therefore, Satan hates everything that God loves. Therefore, Satan hates marriage and wants everyone to be divorced or single or addicted to corn, beating their wiener by themselves with no women around. That's what the devil wants. But similar to the way that Eve was deceived in the garden, the feminist boss babe woman that don't need no man is also being deceived. Because even though they think that having a career and making your own money and being independent is a superior way to live, it's simply not. And the reason for that is because God created and designed the structure of a relationship and he created men and women in very specific ways for specific reasons. And they actually have specific roles. Men were created to lead, to provide, to protect. And women were created to nurture, to be mothers, to start families. And that's what they actually enjoy doing. And somehow our entire society has warped their brains into thinking that going and working a nine to five job or being a CEO is somehow better than raising a family. And they go in and they start to do that and they start to climb the corporate ladder. And then they realize, oh, this sucks. I'm stressed out all the time. I hate doing work. Like, why did I believe that this was going to make me happy? And so we have all these women that are depressed and bitter and hate men, but they also hate their own lives and they're single and they're alone because no masculine men want to date a woman who's also masculine. It would never work because God's design for a relationship is a masculine man who loves Jesus and a feminine woman who also loves Jesus. <laughs> Anything other than that dynamic will never work. You cannot have a feminine, emotional man and a super masculine woman. Both hate being in that kind of relationship. You must have masculine man, feminine woman. But like I said, that original design that Adam and Eve had, Adam was a man and Eve was a woman and Adam was working in the field and he was focused on his mission and his purpose and Eve was ready to have children and to be a mother and to support Adam as the helpmate. That was the original design for all relationships. That was the original design of how a man and a woman come into a, a covenant marriage with God. That's how it's supposed to be. But today we have all these feminine emasculated soy boys that are overly emotional and broke and have no idea what their purpose is or what they're supposed to do. And then they have these women that are super boss babe, independent, and they're bossing these men around. And they don't actually want to have all this responsibility. They just think that they do. And both sides are absolutely miserable because it goes against the way that God designed relationships to be. And anything that goes against the way that God originally intended it to be is from Satan. And Satan is the God of chaos and destruction. The Bible says in John 10, 10, I believe that the devil comes to steal, to kill and destroy. And he's coming to destroy your happiness and your relationships and to steal all the fulfillment that you could possibly have out of a loving relationship between a godly masculine man and a feminine and godly woman. Another reason why feminist boss babe women absolutely hate godly men is because godly men stand on godly ideals. And to prove a point, I bet every single feminist watching this video right now is about to get triggered. I'm going to pull up three Bible verses that will piss them off. But every verse in scripture is God breathed. God inspired this through the Holy Spirit. So if you're pissed off watching this video, you're not pissed off at me. You're pissed off at God. First verse is in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 and it's talking about the biblical structure of a relationship or a marriage. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 says, for the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 says, to the woman, he said, God speaking to Eve, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, 
but he shall rule over you. This is not in a misogynistic, men are better than women. This is the structure of a relationship, a healthy relationship. In order for the relationship to work, someone has to submit and it has to be the woman, right? The Bible says that women are a weaker vessel. That's just how God designed them to be. And feminine women agree with this and they're looking to be led. They're looking for a masculine godly man to come into their life and to lead them properly towards Jesus. Colossians chapter three, verses 18 and 19 says, wives, so Submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. So the whole like hierarchy structure, feminists get so pissed off, but this does not mean that men are better than women or they somehow have more to give than women. God has created men and women equal. They're both equally loved in God's eyes, but they have different roles, right? Similar to if I looked at an offensive lineman on a football team and I was like, hey buddy, go play quarterback. He would suck. That's not his role. He's an offensive lineman. He's not the quarterback, but God in the structure that he's given us calls us to be the head of the wife, but also to love her in the same way that Christ loves the church and gave himself up for the church, right? The Bible also says that there is no greater love than this, that someone would give up their life for the ones that he loves, which is obviously pointing towards Christ dying on the cross to save us from our sins and to give us a chance at eternal life with him in heaven. And we're called to love our wives in the same way that Christ loved us which is a very tall task. We also need to realize that anyone who hates you or disagrees with you because of what you believe in doesn't actually hate you. Like I said, they hate the God that you believe in and that you worship and that you glorify through the way that you live your life. The Bible says in John chapter 15 verses 18 and 20 that if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. Talking about Jesus, the world hated him. They crucified him, they killed him. And if you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I had spoken to you. A servant is not greater than his master. And if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they would also keep yours. But this is not included in the Bible. They don't, they hate God. They hate his word. They hate everything, every biblical idea in the book because they're deceived and their God is the world, which is also Satan. And realize that the, the main like anger that comes from within these feminist women is the demons that are getting aggravated by the Holy Spirit that is inside of you whenever you preach the truth, right? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers and principalities and demons of dark forces and all that stuff. Basically saying that whenever someone gets pissed off and angry at you, or they hate you, it's the demons inside of them getting riled up, but it's not actually them. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood. We're not wrestling with the feminist or LGB blah, 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 supporters, any of that stuff, because they're just being oppressed by demons or possessed because they don't have the Holy Spirit inside. Right? So don't get mad at the person or mad at the girl or mad at the feminist. You need to focus on what's actually going on, which is their demons inside of them that are getting flustered and manifesting <laughs> because of you trying to walk righteously with God, right? A good example of this is if I was in a room with women that I didn't know, and let's just say some of them were feminist. And a girl asked me, what do you look for in a, in a woman? Like what, what, what green flags are you looking for? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for a woman who's born again, who loves Jesus, who has a great relationship with her dad, who is submissive and ready to be led. She's not a boss babe. She's not a career woman. She's not arrogant or a narcissist or anything like that. Like I'm looking for a pure, beautiful, feminine woman of God. That would not land well with everyone in that room. Some people would get pretty pissed off and it's not because because I'm saying anything that's bad or wrong or evil, we're all entitled to our own opinion. We're all entitled to like what we like and to dislike what we don't like. Someone who's a feminist or someone who gets triggered by that is mad because of the God that you serve. And in fact, she's gonna feel like you're attacking her personally, even though you're not. But it's really just the demons inside of them manifesting, getting absolutely butthurt because you're a man of God. And I do not tell you any of this to condemn anybody or to discourage you in your dating life. I'm telling you this, A, to warn you and to bring awareness to you, but also to build you up. I need you to realize that naturally, as a follower of Jesus, you are going to polarize people, meaning people are either gonna love you 
or they're going to hate your guts. Just like whenever Jesus came down to this earth, he had a lot of people who loved him and followed him and were obedient to him. But there was also a ton of people that absolutely hated him to the point of crucifying him and murdering him. And if we're followers of Jesus, how is the world going to treat you or I any differently? Right? If they hated Jesus, they're going to hate you too. <laughs> and you need to be ready and prepared to be hated and to be persecuted by many people on this earth. This Christian walk is not easy for a reason. And like I said in those other Bible verses, they are going to hate you. They are going to persecute you. They're going to want to kill you. But they're not actually persecuting you or hating you. They hate the God that is inside of you, which is the Holy Spirit. Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 36. He says, Do not think that I've come to bring peace to this earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father and daughter against her mother and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Right? Jesus didn't come to bring peace. He came to bring a sword. And so I'm warning you that there are going to be a lot of people that are going to get triggered by you. They're going to be pissed at you. They're not going to like you. And you're not going to know why. And I need you to realize it's because of the Holy Spirit that's inside of you and the God that you serve and the things that you stand for. You're not going to be politically correct. You're not going to be like the rest of the world. You're going to be different. And you're going to be set apart. The Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. And I know that a lot of you that watch this channel are born again Christians and you're walking on the righteous path. I'm giving you a fair warning. You are going to piss off and turn away a lot of women, especially the modern woman. This is not all, you know, bad. It's actually very good because of the way that you carry yourself. You're going to polarize women to one or to another side where they love you or they hate you. And the ones that hate you were never going to be a good fit to be a part of your life anyway. The women who are going to love you because you're a man of God and you're following after Jesus and you stand firm in his word are the ones that God would actually want you to be in a relationship with. Because those women are going to bring you closer to God and not further away like those boss babe feminist girls would. And believe me, there are plenty of feminine, God-fearing women that are still on this earth that would be more than happy to be a part of your life and to be your wife one day. All you need to do is continue to trust in God that he will provide and that he will align you two together whenever you're ready. Maybe you are ready and you've been putting in the work and she needs to be prepared. She needs to get ready. If you wanna know the eight best places to meet high quality Christian women, I want you to go ahead and click on this video. I hope that you learned something today. I hope that God blesses you and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.